In a world of magic and mystery, one elf woman fights crime and the forces of evil in her own unconventional way. These are The Misadventures of Agneta Deveau. Episode 10, Downstairs, Upstairs. Written by Sarah Frass. At last, we meet. What is this place? My name is not important. How you got here? That is a much more pressing question. The story so far. Our hero, Agneta Deveau has been in battle with a demon, a malignant spirit of a man once living, corrupted by the evil in his soul, who sought to wreak havoc in the world he left behind. Agneta had acquired a spell that would destroy him once and for all, but its final component was the name by which the demon had been known when he was alive, a detail that had so far eluded her. Her obsession with defeating this adversary had not distracted her from her usual work, especially not the one that had arrived one rainy night. Joanne, a maid from the mansion of one of Agneta's previous villains, a bigoted former politician, Peter Grantham, had come with the news of conspiracy. I didn't know who else to turn to with this. I didn't know if I could trust the police, so I figured I'd tell the one person who hates Grantham more than me. So what is this? Despite no longer being in office, Lord Grantham has been meeting with serving ministers. They speak freely in front of the servants for the most part, confident what they say won't leave the room or make any sense to us. Except, well, when Minister Drake comes for a visit, and Grantham is telling him all these ideas, and the next week Drake is sharing those ideas as new policies. Well, it seems Grantham isn't as retired as he claims to be. That much makes sense. Do you have any proof? I can't prove any of this, miss. You'll just have to trust me. A plan was made between the two for Joanne to take time off and Agneta to fill in as her substitute under an assumed identity. Lord Grantham would be away for that week, leaving Agneta time to blend in and investigate, provided no one from the family or on the staff were to recognize her. The next morning, she approached the Grantham mansion from the service entrance out the back of the building, dressed in maid's clothes, her curly hair in a bun, and her face tattoos covered in makeup. Come on, bring that through. No time for dilly-dallying. Can I help you, miss? Good morning, sir. My name's Anna Fred. I'm Joanne's replacement. Right. Come on through to my office. Mind the milkman? Come on, Sophie! Hurry up with that milk! Yes, Mrs. Nichols? (coughs) Sorry, Mrs. Nichols. I am Mr. Croft, the butler. This is Mrs. Logan, the housekeeper. Mrs. Logan, Anna Fried. How do you do? Joanne's replacement? Talk about prompt. Yes, normally in situations such as staff shortage, there are protocols for such an event. In this case, we have made an exception, thanks to Joanne's glowing letter of recommendation. For the duration of her absence, you shall be taking on all her duties, namely that of Lady Michelle. She is expected home from a week abroad later this morning. Understood, sir. Come with me. I shall give you a tour of the house. Mr. Croft, a letter came for... Who's this? Collier? This is Joanne's substitute while she's away. Nothing of concern. You have a letter? Joanne's away, is she? Does that fact concern you, Collier? Concern, sir? Me, sir? No, sir. On the tour of the mansion, Agneta surveyed everything, filling in the gaps from Joanne's mud map the night before. Up from the servants' quarters, that and the rear of the house, lower than the main entrance, was the drawing room, dining hall, and library. Up the grand staircase in the foyer, past the portraits of ancestors and family, all curiously missing Grantham, was a long corridor down the centre and running the length of the house, doors leading off to bedrooms, and in the middle, Grantham's study, the door always locked when he was away. Agneta was showed to Lady Michelle's quarters, just up the corridor, where she set about preparing the room. Her parents being servants when she was a child, Agneta knew some of the requirements. And with most of those met and checking the corridor was clear, she crept to Grantham's office door to survey the lock. Unfortunately, Agneta was not a locksmith. Any time she came across a locked door in the past, a heavy kick was often enough to deal with it, but it didn't look like anything she couldn't pick or steal the key for. There was a movement down the corridor, and she quickly stepped away, trying to act casual, glancing down to see if it was the man from downstairs, Collier, His eyes trained on her like a hawk. She sauntered back down the corridor, staring right at him back, their gazes locked, until he retreated back downstairs. Come half past eleven, Lady Michelle arrived home, 
her mother and the butler and footmen there to greet her. Lady Michelle, I am glad to see you back home safe. Likewise. Mama! My dear, how is your sister? She's well, thriving even. Has much gone on while I've been away? I'm afraid Joanne picked up some illness and has gone on leave. Oh no! Fear not, my lady. We have found you a replacement. Oh, well, you must be Annie Frid. That's me, my lady. Pleasure to meet you. I've made sure all of Joanna's duties were performed in her absence, and I will see to any others that will arise. I've laid out a change of clothes for you, too. Thank you. While you help me change, could you tell me about yourself? Me? Not much to say. I'm sure there is. Bet I know exactly who it is that's undressing me. <coughs> well, I grew up in Northern Raleo. Uh, both parents were servants to a wealthy merchant family, the Marchands. Can you speak the language? Oui, madame. We moved down to the border. I went between houses, alls. I knew Joanne. Heard she'd fallen sick, so I came offering my services as a replacement. Rather glad Mr Croft decided to take me on. As am I. You have very warm hands. Oh, sorry, my lady? No, it's nice. We have quite a week ahead of us, none of the usual balls or dinners. But I do have a garden party planned for later in the week. I'll need all hands on deck for that. Of course, my lady. Please, it's Lady Michelle. The next morning, Agnetta's best friend, Termel, had arrived at the predetermined meeting point in the gravel lane behind the property. He looked around nervously, making sure no one had followed him or seen him arrive. His red coat stood out like a signal in this country lane before he turned to the sound of rustling within the trees. Hey. Hey, got your lockpicks. Cheers. They didn't end up searching me bag, but you can never be too careful. How's it looking in there? That office is locked up tight, and there's always someone in that corridor keeping an eye out. Maybe you could cause a distraction, bring people away from the office. Nah, too risky. You think you're alone, and then some random maid just spawns out of nowhere. How are they all? Uh, kinda nice. Bit weird. I'm maid to Michelle, Grantham's daughter. Green eyes, brown hair, freckles. She looks fit, but she's weirdly stuck up, like Felicity Arisham, you know? It's not Lady, it's Lady Michelle. I mean, I get lost. Sounds like she left an impression. We were up last night talking. I guess she's nice. Sincere. Opposite to her dad. It felt like she meant what she said about people and elves. Uh, anyway, cheers for this. Same time tomorrow. Try for midday. I'll see you then. As Agneta climbed over the fence and made her way back to the mansion, little did she know the footman Collier saw her and burning within him was the instinctual desire to meddle, a desire he acted upon later that day as Agnetta carried laundry to and from Michelle's bedroom. So you're the new maid kicking up a fuss? Kicking up a fuss? I don't know what you mean by that. Joanne's replacement? Frida, was it? It's very unusual replacement should arrive so swiftly before Mr Croft should put out the call for someone. It's almost like you were waiting in the wings, ready to seize the opportunity. I don't think that's any of your business. I think you'll find it is. Especially if some outsider has come in unannounced, looking to stir up trouble. There you go again. Stir up trouble. What is it to you anyway? Who are you? I'm Thomas Collier. I'm the footman. Lewd. But, but, but it's also my business as to serve as the eyes and ears of the master of this house, Lord Grantham. And I think he and Mr Croft would be interested to learn that a nemesis such as you, Miss DeVoe, has entered this house under an assumed name and false pretenses. Oh, is that true? Well, I tell you what, in your house staff hierarchy, bootlicking is under lady's maid, which I am. That may be, but I don't think Mr Croft will ignore what I say when I go and talk to him. Nah, I don't think you will tell him. With a quick push to the chest, Collier tumbled backwards down the grand staircase, a tangle of limbs rolling over and over until he came to a stop in a crumpled heap on the first landing. Oh no! Come quick! Mr Collier's had a fall. How terrible for Thomas! I know. Falling down those three flights of stairs. Remarkable he didn't break his neck. It was your new maid, Annie Frid, who found him down there. It, it was? Without her, Collier might very well be dead. I don't think it's unreasonable to say Annie Frid is something of a hero. Well, 
Now with Collier out of the way, Agneta had more opportunities to try unlocking the door to Grantham's office and retrieve the files and proof of conspiracy. Lock-picking kit in hand, she set about fiddling with the tumblers. Minutes felt like hours, her elf ears listening out for approaching footsteps as well as the clicks of the lock, only for the pick to jam in place, then snap. Stepping away a quick second to let out a muffled cry of frustration, okay. she retrieved the remnants of the pick from the lock and returned to her post. The only key to the office was with the butler, Mr. Croft, always in his pocket, never set down on his desk or on a hook. It went with him to his room at night. Agneta wasn't much of a pickpocket, so that option wasn't viable. She could always clobber him over the head and take it while he was unconscious, but did she want to do that? The fact that she considered it was potentially worrying. Excuse me. Annie Frid, was it? That's me, my lady. How do you do today? You can just call me Liza. I've never been very comfortable with the formalities. <laughs> to be honest, Miss Liza, neither have I. Now, I wanted to just talk to you and thank you personally for helping me with Thomas. I mean, to take a fall like that, it's terrible. But you saw to him so well. I know most maids who shriek and collapse themselves at such a sight. <laughs> Trust me, I did what had to be done. I also wanted to give you a little heads up about my daughter's party tomorrow. She and her friends can get a bit mischievous. Not that I don't think you'll have any trouble with her. It's her only window of time to really unwind. What with her busy life. Oh, I'll be on my toes, don't worry. Hey, hey what was that last thing you said? Agneta came to realize the door wasn't the only entry to the office. There was also the window. Accessible by a ledge, she planned to clamber out Lady Michelle's window and scoot along to the office, unlatching that window from the outside or breaking a pane to reach through. Now, the only window she needed was one of opportunity. Friday, Lady Michelle's garden party. Lady Liza was away, as was Croft and housekeeper Mrs. Logan. And Yetta stood by at the party, not there to serve drinks, but to see to Lady Michelle, should she or one of her girlfriends, all upper-class ladies, need anything more personal seen to. She would excuse herself shortly, take this moment to return to the house and make moves on the window ledge heist. It just seemed she couldn't get away, being kept busy with some request or another. Michelle, is that your new maid? What a striking woman. She is, I must say. I am rather taken with her. Poor Joanne, though. Falling ill. It's terrible. Ah, oh, isn't it? But I say, I wouldn't mind her undressing me every night. You are terrible, Muriel. Although, that does give me an idea. Agneta shifted uncomfortably, feigning the need to dash to the bathroom in order to infiltrate the office. That opportunity was dashed, however, as a conflict between the ladies arose. All right, then I see no other course to resolve this than a duel. Right you are. Fetch the swords. Annie Fred, please help Lady Michelle undress her top for the duel. Um, why? First blood, of course. Better cut the bare skin than cut the clothes and risk the fabric entering and infecting the wound. Right. Of course. Well, come on, Harry. She's not going to strip herself. Preparing Lady Michelle for the duel. And Yetta wondered if she'd ever have a chance to sneak away before she caught the lady's gaze. She wore an expression unlike any Agneta had experienced her way before. Her mouth, a loose smile, her green eyes intense and full of wonder. Agneta stared back, her mouth agape. Time seemed to slow before her face burned with embarrassment and she snapped her gaze downwards, unhelpfully now staring at Michelle's naked top. The duel, fought with rapiers the girls just seemed to have on them, was slow, considered, and after a few minutes of strafing around the garden and the exchange of blows, they both conceded and called a truce. Agneta threw a coat over both ladies and turned to excuse herself, before seeing the butler and housekeeper return to the mansion, her window of opportunity now closed. That night, as Agneta made her way upstairs to prepare Michelle for bed, she ran into the butler, Croft. Good work handling the garden party earlier today. Lady Michelle had nothing but praise for you. I believe you have proven yourself, Annafred, and have earned yourself a place on this staff once Joanne returns. Oh, thank you, sir. Have you any idea when Joanne, or indeed Lord Grantham, are expected back? 
Lord Grantham will be back in three days' time, as has been established. A letter arrived this morning from Joanne. It seems she will be away a few days more. Anyway, I shall leave you to it. Agneta made her way upstairs. Michelle sat at her dressing table, removing her earrings, looking troubled. Here's your drink, Lady Michelle. Oh, let me get that for you. Full day of socialising and emancipated dueling behind you. Do you usually get up to that sort of thing? Oh, no. That was just silly, really. She got up and made her way to the bed, climbing in as Agneta stood by awkwardly, uncertain whether to tuck her in or not. So she made her way to leave, before Michelle continued. I feel more with each day. This life isn't for me. Anifred, have you ever felt torn between one life and another? It depends at what's at stake. I won't pry, but in any case, I usually just go with what feels best. I'm I'm sorry about what happened today, if, if I offended you. I put you in a really uncomfortable situation, having to undress me like that. Nah, no offence at all. Really? There were only some tits. I got a pair myself. And with a grin, she left, leaving Michelle rather taken aback. The next morning was bright and sunny. A low mist still hung over the ground and frost on the grass in the shadow of the mansion. Making her way back upstairs, Agneta considered her chances of success were she to try to break into the office via the window today, before she realized the hall was flooded with light from a door she had never seen open. The office door! She hurried forwards and glanced in, empty of life. Walls lined with books. To the right was a desk. Agneta checked the coast was clear before swooping in on it. The top drawer was unlocked. Within it were notebooks, pens, magazines, and there, a ledger with details of corruption and conspiracy, all in Grantham's handwriting, the proof she needed to get her friend's job back. She stashed the ledger in the waistband of her maid's apron and set to leave before freezing. Michelle was at the door. Oh, sorry. Did I startle you? A bit, but no harm done. Father's office. It could be mine one day, if I decide to take the path he did. But to do so would be to deny who I am. And I don't want to do that. Lady Michelle, it's... It's just Michelle. I want to say, Anifred... Though I haven't known you long, and with you about to leave, I feel things for you, and I want to get to know you more. So do I. Get to know you, I mean. I'm kind of in the middle of something, but, well, I guess it's only fair to say you can call me Anietta. That being my name and all. I, uh, and I guess you know, since you're now so close to me, like, right here, uh, I don't know. Fancy a snog? Michelle leaned forwards and planted a kiss on Agneta's lips, the two stumbling backwards into the desk. As Michelle continued, Agneta's eyes darted around the room as if to make sure they weren't being watched, before her eyes landed on a portrait that hung on the wall opposite the desk. A tall man with dark skin, a long face, held in an aloof expression. His black hair was slicked back, and he had a thin pencil moustache above his contemptuous lips. His dark eyes glared down at them from the canvas, piercing their souls from beyond the paint. That was the face of the demon, the entity that had long haunted her in the painted flesh. She broke away to point to the portrait. Who's that in that portrait? That? That's David Maloney. Or Dave. He was a mentor to my dad. Died five years ago. Why is that? Ha! Gotcha, you spirit bastard! She kissed Michelle back before freezing once more. A thought that should have occurred to her earlier. Hang on. Why is the office open? Croft said the only reason the office would be unlocked was if your father's home. Excuse me a moment. I just need to, uh, go. If you fancy continuing this later, I'm at 45 Juniper Street in town, provided you don't hate my guts or something. What's going on? Sorry, gotta go. Agneta ran down the hall as fast as she could in the maid's dress and began descending the steps to see the foyer abuzz with staff, no doubt anticipating Grantham's arrival. She ran back upstairs, glancing Michelle down the corridor, looking on in confusion, before running the other way to a service lift at the other end of the building. 
Once in and slowly descending, she pulled the diary from her waistband, where it had been jabbing her in the ribs. Stowing it firmly under her arm, she tapped her foot impatiently as the lift finally reached the servant's level, the doors clattering open and allowing her to stride out. The exit was in sight, but a voice she recognized drifted from the kitchen in conversation with Croft, the butler. Of course, we did not anticipate your return so soon. One doesn't expect their bowels to evacuate after what looks like to be a simple meal, so changes had to be made. Which reminds me, Lady Michelle's maid Joanne has been on sick leave. Her replacement, though, a dark-skinned elf woman by the name of Anna Freed, has been attending to her needs and has proven herself worthy of future employment. So long as she does the work to your high standards, she'd be a troll for all I care. Though if she's anything like that other elf woman. Grantham stepped into the hall, face to face with Anietta. You! <laughs> Grantham collapsed. Anietta ran out across the grass to the back fence, where Termel just so happened to stand. I've got the book! What? I said, I've got the book! You tripped. You okay? Go, go, go! Anietta lobbed the book over the fence into Tamel's arms, throwing herself over as the dress tore itself to shreds. Hordes of staff pouring from the mansion giving chase, a limping Grantham, and bewildered Croft and Michelle watching on. The pair ran down the gravel lane, cackling at the madness that had just unfolded, before making their way back to the vestment silver. David Maloney, that's him all right. Lifelong conservative politician who died some five years ago. A mentor to Lord Grantham. He's our demon. You finally found him. It was before my time, so I never met him. But I do know who he is. Full name, David Wood Estes Maloney. Dave to his friends, born in Morn, raised in Josephinia. Had his entire political career here in Varadune. A textbook example of a big fish in a small pond. It came out after he died he was a bit of a sneaky rat with a lot of underhand deals, illegal spending, corruption. Kind of makes sense he has ties to Grantham with everything he ended up doing. And lines up with what you said he's been up to as a demon. Could he have been funneling money from the Gordon Goodbride religious retreat to fund his old political party? What use does the spirit have for material wealth? When he can use it to further his goals in the material world, if that makes sense. But as far as I know, Dave Maloney wasn't magic. And I thought you said he'd have to be a mage to come back as a spirit as strong as he was. Magic takes many forms. He might not have been shooting fire out his fingers, but if he got to the position he did, it could have been natural luck that did something to sway the hearts and minds the way he wanted. So what next? At last, I have the final piece of the spell to wipe him out for good. His name. Now I just need to confront him on the spirit plane. Inspector Slater, how do you do this morning? I can get a devo. I'm arresting you on the charge of assault and breaking and entering upon a member of government, the arson attack upon the Arch's carriage repair shop, and the murder of Peter Dominix. Please, put your arms behind your back so I may restrain you. Hang on, you can't do this. I think you'll find, Mr Robertson, as an inspector within the city guard, arresting felons is indeed what I am supposed to do. On what charge? I told you the charge. All three of them, you terminal dingbat. That was an assault. What I did, some people pay good money for. And yet, stop it. I can fix this. I'll get you out. Avenge me, Turbo! Avenge me! At last, with the final piece of the puzzle in place, Agneta could confront her nemesis once and for all, only for an old enemy to rise up and seemingly defeat her. How can she get out of this? I don't think she's getting out of this one. For too long, Agneta de Vaux has treated this city like her own personal playground. It's about time these laws she so dutifully protects caught up with her. Tune in next week to hear me take her on once and for all. The Misadventures of Agneta DeVoe, starring Liz Corrick as Agneta, Jennifer Fink as Lady Michelle, Royce Pentagast as Termel and Croft. Rachel Lee as Liza, Mrs. Logan, Mrs. Nichols, and Muriel. Teresa Maleski as Laura. Emma Davy, Joanne. Jared Foley as Collier. Simon Ashton as Inspector Slater. And Michael Mengada as the narrator. 
Theme music composed by Matt Harris. Additional music by Kevin McLeod of Incompetech.com. Produced by City Park Radio 2022.